We've toured the cameras, we've looked at the upgrades. Now let's see what the X80 Pro can really do. This is where I get to nerd out hard on photography and optics. I'm really excited to be collaborating with Vivo on this three-part series. Part one was an introduction. It's a tour around the hardware and the camera app. Part two, we looked at specific upgrades and improvements. Now the X80 Pro gets to do battle with a proper camera to do this. To, to do this properly, we're gonna have to jump in first with a bit of camera nerd math. Follow me. Okay, now. When we talk about a lens and its field of view, we often describe that as a focal length in millimeters. 50 millimeter lens, a 24 millimeter lens, a 100 millimeter lens. The higher the number, the longer the zoom. The lower the number, the wider a field of view. But things get a little funky when we change focal lengths with sensor sizes. The way we understand this field of view is through our familiarity with film and full frame digital sensors. We're really familiar with that pairing, what a 50 millimeter lens looks like when paired with a full frame sensor. We're so familiar with that look that when we change the sensor size, we describe the change in view as how it would look compared to a full frame equivalent. If you take a 50 millimeter lens and you pair it with a smaller sensor, it's like you're cropping into the lens. This is completely different than a digital crop where you're cutting away data from the output of the sensor. Here, you're just using less of the lens. We're only going to use the center of the lens. But for using less of the glass, the image will appear more zoomed in than on a full frame sensor. We literally call this a crop factor, cropping the lens. Now to calculate a crop factor, we measure the diagonal length of the sensor and we can accurately describe the look of a lens paired with different sized sensors. My work cameras of choice are Panasonic with micro four thirds sensors. The sensor diagonal is half the length of a full frame sensor. It has a crop factor of two. If I take a 12 millimeter lens and I put it on my Panasonic with a crop factor of two, it will look similar to a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. This predictive math works for any focal length on this camera. I multiply it by two and that's how I estimate the field of view compared to a full frame camera in my brain. I'm basically always thinking in terms of full frame, even if I'm using cameras with smaller sensors. What's also really cool, and it helps us compose our images in our minds, crop factor also generally holds true for aperture and depth of field. Multiply the aperture by the crop factor and you'll get a reasonable approximation of what that lens will look like compared against a full frame. A 50 millimeter lens at F2 on micro four thirds will look like a 100 millimeter lens on a full frame camera at F4. A 12 millimeter lens at F2.8 on micro four thirds will look like a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame camera at f5.6. It's great because this is just basic multiplication and it's pretty easy when you understand why we do this. Because I think it's too difficult describing every sensor as a unique pairing with every individual lens focal length. So we mostly just think in terms of full frame and then we do a little crop factor multiplication in our brains. All well and good for our cameras, but what about our phones? Follow me. Whew. All right, phones work exactly the same way, but the sensors are even smaller. So the crop factor is larger. From a photography standpoint, what can make this a little confusing? We often mix and match our technical specifications. We'll talk about equivalent focal length, but then describe the actual aperture. A practical example, a phone that a lot of people are probably familiar with, an iPhone 12 Pro camera sensor has a 26 millimeter equivalent lens. The field of view is going to look like a 26 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, but Apple advertises an actual F 1.6 aperture. That sensor size was really common on a lot of phones of previous generations. The crop factor on that sensor is just over six. So if we're talking about the equivalent focal length of 26 millimeters, the equivalent aperture is closer to F10. When people talk, especially when photographers talk about phone cameras and they don't seem much impressed by smartphone optics, 
That's why shooting all the time at a fixed aperture of f10 isn't something we're going to do on a proper camera. But it's kind of good enough for a phone if you use it in point and shoot situations, if you have nothing else on you, and if you have good light, it's it's probably gonna look fine. But it's easy to see how a standalone camera can create more photographic images using a shallower depth of field. All of this camera nerd math rambling, just tell me what this means for the X80 Pro. One more scene change, follow me. <laughs> okay, that was more than a bit of explaining to get here to this point. So thank you very much. I'm glad you stuck around for all the math because the Vivo is a bit more exciting for a phone. The sensor on this phone is a significant step up in surface area. And if we measure the diagonal, we arrive at a crop factor of 3.5. Calling back everything we've learned so far, the equivalent focal length of this lens is 23 millimeters. The actual aperture for this lens is f1.6. Multiply that by the crop factor, and the equivalent aperture should resemble a full frame camera at f5.6. This is a much more photographic look for a camera than previous generations of phones that would shoot an equivalent of around f10. And did those numbers sound familiar? Remember my example with my Panasonic. This is roughly $2,500 worth of camera body and lens. At 12 millimeters and its maximum aperture of f2.8, this combo will look similar to a full frame camera at 24 millimeters and f5.6. Both of these will look similar to a full frame camera at 24 millimeters and with an aperture of f5.6. The math works. We're pushing phone optics into territory where we can produce photographic images and cinematic video which visually compare directly against significantly more expensive optical hardware. Again, I've got to reiterate, this is optical performance before any software or portrait mode processing. This is a direct head to head. Now, of course, the larger sensor on my camera is going to demonstrate some advantages for pixel level detail and low light raw performance. But the phone is a pocket powerhouse computer that can make up for some of those differences with software enhancement. Where the pixels might be a little bit smaller, the X80 Pro can use the super raw mode to stack raw images delivering a computational DNG file with better dynamic range. We start with an optically similar view, and we can use a little extra compute power to help close some of the gap. Now, when I bring this kind of comparison up, I get in my comments, I get some camera snobs who, who are really sensitive or a little defensive, like I'm somehow trying to make proper cameras look less good instead of being excited for how much mobile photography has improved. I'm obviously not going to give up my cameras and lenses for getting work done. But when we say things like the best camera is the one you have with you, it's increasingly likely that a phone is going to be the first camera folks reach for, even pro photographers. It's in your pocket. It's connected to all your communication services. It's got radios and storage. So why not pick up a phone that gets you really close to the optical performance of a standalone camera. We're quickly moving past those days where a phone camera was an optically compromised experience built mostly for the convenience of having it with you. You know, that shrug photographers would give indicating, I guess if you had nothing else, a phone is okay. I guess. From reviewing last year's Vivo X70 Pro Plus to working on this video series for the X80 Pro, it's encouraging to see how quickly the phone camera experience has evolved. Where a number of disciplines benefit from having better cameras immediately accessible and built onto a computer that can properly edit photos and videos, which is also directly connected to networking radios for quickly sharing and collaborating. It might be low level, a user who wants to spruce up their family videos or shoot nicer vlogs or online video, incorporate more footage into professional projects knowing you can properly color grade it or we can climb even higher. Use a discrete system for remote journalism. It's smartphone photography at the bleeding edge.
and I really dig it. Once again, a huge thank you to Vivo for collaborating and sponsoring this series, and a shout out to some pals. These videos weren't made in a vacuum, so a big thank you to the amazing Clark Wolf and my brother from another mother, TK Bay, for contributing really being awesome helping me get this stuff done. This is going to wrap up our look at the cameras, so I hope you've enjoyed the conversation and I hope it inspires people to shoot a little more, experiment and play with your phones. This is really fun stuff and it keeps getting better. I'll be following this up soon with a look at the Vivo X80 Pro as a phone, maybe also how it performs for gaming. I have a lot of thoughts there too. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has just been absolutely incredible. Those of you who are checking out the links in my descriptions, if you've caught my website, somegadgetguy.com, or those of you who have joined the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is a collection of the coolest tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.